Hey guys, Brian here. Today we're going to be talking about Marlin lever action rifles. All these rifles are clear. The only ammo around is what's on this rifle's quiver. So, Ranger Point Precision and I have been talking and we both get a lot of the same questions basically every month via DMs, uh, messages on Instagram, whatnot, uh, comments, you know, everything. And they're all about the same stuff roughly, which is what part do I need for this particular rifle? Do I need this stock, that stock, this handguard, this loading gate? What do I need? And pretty much all this information is on Ranger Point's website, but I know most people don't like to read. So here's a video putting all the information in video format for you guys so you can look at what the part is that I'm talking about while I'm talking about it. So hopefully this helps clear up some of the confusion and possibly inform you on some new stuff as well. Uh, I'll be doing a video based on Henry and Rossi individually as well, but right now I'm going to do Marlin because predominantly there are more Marlins and Marlin parts out there than there are the others. So let's jump right into this. We're not going to be talking about 22s, the Model 39s. I love them, but we're only going to be discussing the centerfire lever action rifles here. So you're going to have two types of receivers and three different sizes. First, let's look at the two types. For the types, you're going to have a straight stock. As you can see, this is nice and straight. There's no curvature to it. The other option is going to be a pistol grip that has a curve to it. Even though these are both 1894s, you cannot interchange straight grip and pistol grip because the trigger tang here on the bottom is curved. So you cannot interchange those, nor can you interchange two pistol grips among different companies. So it'd be like putting a Ford bumper on a Chevy truck. It's not going to just mount in place. It's not going to work. They have different interfacing options on the bottom of the trigger guard or the top or both. So that's not going to work. Next up, we have three different sizes, as I mentioned. So we have the 1894, like I've been showing you. This is your smallest receiver, and these are pistol calibers only. Next up, we have the midsize, and this is going to be the 336 and 1895. And the 1895 and 336 are the exact same receiver. They just hog out more material on the 1895. So technically, it is a little bit weaker, I guess, because of the pressures. You could run a 4572, but they are the same receiver. And the one that most people probably haven't seen is the 1895M. And this is an 1895M. This is a 450 Marlin. And this is an 1895 on steroids, a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, heavier duty, meant for higher pressure cartridges. So those are your two styles and three different sizes of lever actions. Now let's look at the 1894s, the midsize, and the large ones individually. Now before we dive into the individual models, there's a couple of things I can guarantee you. One, these are all drilled and tapped. So as you can see, these all have Picatinny rail of some kind on top of them because they are all drilled and tapped. And that's a guaranteed. These are all side eject rifles, so they can drill and tap the top as opposed to top eject rifles that other companies put out where you cannot obviously mount a Picatinny rail over the ejection port. So that's a guarantee. These are all going to be drilled and tapped on top. Next, the other guarantee is there's going to be a lot of variation in sizes. You can't run a 4570 loading gate on a 357, just like you can't run a 357 loading gate on a 4570. You need to purchase the appropriate loading gate for your caliber. So when we dive into the 1894s, let's look at the 357 first. So the only variation you're really going to have amongst 357s is going to be, is it a straight stock or a pistol grip stock? Doesn't matter what the finish is, you know, this is a black loading gate on a stainless gun, that's okay. It's the same part, it's just a different finish. So you can move amongst different categories and still use the same parts interchangeably except for the uh, buttstock if it's straight grip or pistol grip. The only pistol grip, uh, pistol caliber carbines that came out would be this 1894 CST chambered in 357 mag, the Marlin Dark, and then also the 1894 SBL that was chambered in 44 mag, I believe. And I may not have all of them covered, but that was pretty much it. So everything else is going to be a straight stock like this one here. Dimensionally, these are smaller, like I said, than the midsize and the larger. And it makes for a very light and handy rifle. They're a lot of fun to shoot. And, you know, everything else is interchangeable on these. The Comet Brakes, the Mag Tube and Follower, all that, as long as you are caliber specific, it's all going to be the same. Doesn't matter which family of 1894s it's in. Now, one thing to note is when you get into the 1894s, they did throw out some curveballs every now and then, and this 1894P is one of them. This is a 44 mag that's ported, but what's different about it is, for some reason, they put the tenon 
about an inch off from the standard of all the other guns. And this is an older one. I don't want to do that. I recently acquired it. And for all you guys that give me a hard time saying I'm destroying lever guns, this one's original. I'm not messing with it. The only thing I did was put a, a Picatinny rail on top so I can throw a red dot on for some fun. But that's it. This gun's going to stay like this. Oh, and I changed out the uh, lever because these levers kick the other one's butts. I have big hands. <laughs> so that's it. And like I said, that's the, the biggest thing to look out for is you need to measure your tenon location and see if it's going to fit with the aftermarket stock. If you have one that is not just your standard 1894, this P model is a little bit different. So there were a few variations. There's a lot of different ones out there. So just check that before ordering. I think that pretty much covers it for the 1894s. All right, so now let's move into the 336. When it comes to the 336, this is where you will see some cross-platform things happening. Uh, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, there were some white label branding, basically, of different firearms. So, if you have a Glenfield, that's going to be the same as a 336, as well as a Rossi Rio Grande. And the 336 was offered in several calibers, 3, uh, 3030, 35 Remington, 308 Marlin Express, and 338 Marlin Express. The 35 Remington is going to have a slight variation on the lever and the control blade and the way it's designed. So, that lever will not work in the other 336 models and vice versa. The 336, 3030, and 35 Remington would have been possibly offered with a barrel band like this one. There also were some end cap models, but you will see more barrel, barrel bands on those. And then the 308 Marlin Express and the 338 Marlin Express would be offered with the end cap model that doesn't have this band over the top. So that's just a couple of things to note when ordering parts for your 336. I've also had a lot of questions about the buttstock on this 336 when I've posted photos of it recently. And this buttstock actually came off of my new Marlin 1895 Trapper. They went with a darker wood and I thought it looked really nice when combined with the Ranger Point Sniper Gray uh, handguard. So that's where that buttstock's living now. Next up, we're going to have the 1895 and these were chambered in 4570, 444, and 410. Everything's going to be interchangeable except for the loading gate, the mag tube, follower, and the quiver because you're going to have different size cartridges. You're going to have to have a different size quiver and the loading gate, follower, and mag tube. Like I said, those are all going to be different. One other thing to note is you can't put a comet brake on the uh, 410 because it's going to use a choke instead of a brake. Other than that, parts are going to be interchangeable. They're all going to be pistol grips. They're all going to have the tenon. They're not going to have a barrel band. So... That's all the same. Internals are the same, so you can change out the trigger accordingly, and they're all going to be drilled and tapped the same like the others. So that covers the 1895. When it comes to the 1895M, the only thing I've found is that the receiver is thicker and heavier duty. All of the 1895 parts I've put on this gun have worked out just fine, so I've had no issues there interchanging parts as I see fit. As you can see, I've got a handguard, a lever, and I had this 1895 straight buttstock on here. So any of the 1895 parts have worked just fine on this gun. If you have one of these, good luck finding ammo. It is extremely expensive. I got a heck of a deal. Lady was getting rid of a few guns. That's where I also got this one and a 39M and offered one price for the guns and ammo. Turns out there were 10 boxes of ammo for this, which is really nice because it actually uses the same bullets as the 4570. It's just uh, more powder. So I can reload the brass from this and have quite a few rounds of ammo for it. And I got a really good deal. One of those lucky finds. Well, I hope this helps some of you guys out. You know, I know there's a lot of different parts, a lot of different products that can go on these guns and the sizes, calibers, and receiver variations can throw a monkey wrench in things. So I really hope this helped inform some of you guys if you need that help. I know there's a lot of new lever action owners out there. The lever action market is blowing up and I've been blamed for some of that apparently in the comments and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I thoroughly enjoy these things. I hope you guys do. I know a lot of you do. And there's just, there's so much customization that can be done with them. And that's what's great is we can make each one of these rifles our own. Every one of these is different and they constantly change. So that's, that's what's great. It's what I really enjoy about them. And it's, it's something different than a black rifle. I love my black rifles. I got a bunch of them over here and more, but you know, this, this is just fun. You feel like a cowboy when you get out there. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about any of these guns or anything else, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. And uh, like I said, check out Ranger Point's site if you want basically a printed version of what we just went through. And uh, check back soon. we got a lot more coming. Have a good one, guys.